This is Jean Marie Ward for Bugsy Magazine. With me today is author Joe Walton, whose 2011 novel, among others, just won the Nebula Award for Best Novel of the Year. Congratulations, Thank Joe. You. Among others is your first YA novel, set in a decade most of us would like to forget, yet it's every, on everyone's list of favorite books. What's the secret that makes this book so special and resonates so strongly with readers? It's not a YA book, it's not published as YA, and it is not a YA book, it just happens to have a young protagonist. Not every book with a 15-year-old protagonist is in fact YA, because you know what? Practically all grown-ups alive today used to be 15. This is true. It, it's kind of hard to meet somebody who wasn't. This is a book for, for ex-15-year-olds. Uh, not, not particularly for today's 15-year-olds, though in fact today's young people will have been enjoying it. Uh, as far as I can tell. And I think I think that is the secret. I think it's everybody used to be 50. <laughs> everybody can identify with somebody uh, somebody who was 50. Well, I was wondering if part of the resonance was the importance of uh, science fiction and fantasy and how that informs the characters relationships yes yes I think so I think I think that's that's a lot of it particularly within SIF or within fandom that people are reading this book because uh, or at least they're, they're identifying that they're, they're liking it because it is a female intellectual coming of age and generally within YA certainly you get books that are about men boys having Im intellectual coming of age and women have emotional coming of age women get to fall in love and be fulfilled and have emotional coming of age whereas men get to have intellectual coming of age and this is a female intellectual coming of age I, I think that's one of the things that that makes people like it did science fiction and fantasy play a similarly large role in your own uh, period as a 15 year old yes prior to becoming an adult yes and yes, so it, it, it basically this somewhat reflects your own experience in that regard yes that's true are there more novels with younger protagonists I won't say YA in your future uh, or are you the, thing, the thing I'm running at the moment is uh, set at the Congress of Vienna and the protagonists are in their 40s um, and my previous novel, Life Load, has a, a middle-aged woman as a protagonist. But, you know, young people starting out in life are at an interesting point in their journey, and so are older people. So I guess it's, it's very likely, if I am spared to write a lot more books, some of them will have young protagonists, and some of them won't, and they'll all be different. <laughs> uh, yes, well, that's something that you have mentioned, that... Uh you like, you don't want to get bored. No, I, I, I get very easily bored, so all my books are different from each other. So if you've liked one of my books, you might hate all the others. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that does happen. Or alternatively, if you hated one of my books, there might be another one that, that you'd enjoy instead. Uh, one of the things that impressed me most about your bi bibliography is its breadth. You've got the Celtic fantasy, you've got the alternate history set in a fascist uh, Britain, you've got, among others, you've got Life Load. Mm -hmm. What, in your mind, connects all these books? They've all got a lot of history in, and they are all... All of, all of my books tend to be about responsibility uh, and, uh, and, and, and history. Mm -hmm. But but they yeah they are they are very different they're in different subgenres they're in different styles they, yeah, it makes it more interesting I I just get kind of bored doing the same thing and will Metternich play a role in the new book yes yes Metternich is very important in the in the in the new book no it's it, 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 it's the most Eurocentric novel of all time it is the, the Congress of Vienna ended the Napoleonic Wars and it's it's where the pattern of what was going to happen to the, the whole of the 19th century in Europe got, got laid down and sorted out. And mm -hmm. Metternich is one of the, one of the key players, al along with Talleyrand. Tal Talleyrand is, is one of the, the major characters in the, in the novel. So you, you are playing with history. Is it yeah. straight history? No, it's, it's secret history. Ah. Um, it's, it, it, is, it is secret history. It is, it is um, things, that, things that, that could have happened uh, in between. Um, you, 
you probably be surprised. <laughs> you, you blogged about your inspira the inspiration behind some of your poems. I'm thinking of doing laundry on the last day of the world. Mm -hmm. What starts the creative process for a novel for you? Oh, usually, I mean different things, but but usually I will get an idea. And I will think, okay, that's an interesting idea. I'll, I'll work that out, and I'll work it out in loads and loads of detail, and then I'll never write the book. Um, and then I'll get a different kind of idea, and it'll be, it'll be an idea that, that comes with other stuff, and I will just start writing it, and, and it'll, it'll work out. It, 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 var it varies a lot. Um, my, my World Fantasy Award-winning novel, Tooth and Claw, I was reading Trollope's Small House in Arlington, and the library called to say that um, a book that I was waiting for had come in, and I went to get it, and so I was reading that, and, and I'd abandoned Small House in Arlington. And my husband came home from work, and I was, I was reading it, and it was, it was Ursula Le Guin's The Other World, Other Wind. And my husband said, how's your book? Because <laughs> I hadn't made dinner. And I said, well, it's, it's good, but, but it doesn't understand dragons. And he said, Trollope doesn't understand dragons. And the entire background for Tooth and Claw comes out of Emmett saying, Trollope doesn't understand dragons. Because I just thought, yes, Trollope understands dragons totally, perfectly well. He's not so good on human women. Mm -hmm. and, and the characters are obviously dragons. And so, so I wrote this entire Victorian dragon novel in which all the characters are dragons who eat each other. And they're also Victorians. Um, just, just out of that, I, I, I did all of the, the world building exactly how it would work in my head right then. I could, I could just see it all, how it would work, and, and wrote the book. Um, and then other, other things do take a lot of research, and I, I think about them for a bit longer than that. Well, the Victorians certainly ate their young, that's yeah, for sure. It's exactly. There's, there's a chapter called The Dangers of Consumption. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. yes, indeed. Um, were you really named for Joe March and Little Women? Yes, I was. Yes. How, how is that? Did that sort of uh, yes. act as a predictor of your future life? Yes, yes, it's quite scary, really, when you think about it. Yes, yes, I am exactly like her, or at least not really, but um, I, I am more like her than, than you would randomly expect. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, it's really amazing how names do have power. Yes, it makes me worry about the fact that I called my son after Alexander the Great. Oh, my goodness, <laughs> that is going to. Um, I've got one question and one request left, and the first one, the question is, how did a nice lady like you get involved with International Pixel Stain Techno Peasant Day? Oh, no, I, 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 that was me. Uh, that, was, that was all me. How, Howard Hendricks um, said that everybody who posted anything online for free was a web scab, and I'm from the South Wales Valleys. Which, which is mining valleys and it's a mining community and a very unionized community. And you don't call people scabs mm -hmm. unless you really mean it. That's, that's fighting words. And they, that, that, that was really kind of uh, a, a worrying thing. And at the time, my novel Farthing had been nominated for the Nebula. I'm not a member of CIFOR. Uh, I've never been a member of CIFOR. I'm not an American uh, and I'm not a member of CIFOR. But um, he, w he was the vice president of CIFOR when he said this, Hendrix. So, I thought, Farthing's been nominated for Nebula, I've actually got standing to, to, to say something back. And what I, what I said back, he, he, he called everybody pixel-stained techno-peasants, and I said, okay, well, let's, let's embrace this identity. And I called for everybody who thought that it, it wasn't being a scab to put stuff online, to put something up online for free uh, on the, the 23rd of April, which is Shakespeare's birthday. And a lot of people did. I mean, it's really surprising people did. I mean, I thought my friends would do this, but like Mercedes Lackey put something up, and, and Robert Reed, really brilliant writers, well-known people, and lots and lots of people did it. And it was it was it was fun, and there, there was some really great stuff got got put up online for that. I'm not a huge fan of everything should be free. I'm not Cory Doctorow, but. If I post a poem on my blog, I'm being a scab? I don't think so. And I don't think you get to call me a scab for doing that. And I, I want to be paid. I want to eat like everybody else. Yeah. But, but if I want to give things away as free samples, or if I want to give things away to my friends and people who want to randomly read my blog, why shouldn't I do that? Why shouldn't anybody do that? And I, th I, th I think on the whole, the, the feeling was, was very much in favor. I, I agree with it. Um, I agree with your side, and I also agree with it because 
it makes it adds an added celebration to Shakespeare's birthday. Yeah. And it's yeah. it's still going. It's getting bigger and bigger every year, and I think that's great. And the request is to close this interview. You have a very special mic check, and I was wondering if you could recite it for me in its entirety. Okay, this is, this is Keats's on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Much have I traveled in the realms of gold, and many goodly states and kingdoms seen. Round many western islands have I been, which bards in fealty to Apollo hold. Oft of one wide expanse have I been told, the deep-browed Homer ruled as his domain. But never had I breathed its pure serene till I heard Chapman speak out loud and bold. Then felt I like some watcher of the skies when some new planet sweeps into his ken, or like stout Cortes when with eagle eyes he stared at the Pacific and all his men looked at each other in a wild surmise, silent upon a peak in Darien. And that is the ultimate poem about how wonderful reading is. It certainly is, and it's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you.